Hi, I'm Mike. Ranching, farming, and agriculture in general is a mystery. 48% of Americans say they never seek information about where their food was grown or how it was produced. Today, we grapple with that as we take a look at a few agricultural questions that may just surprise you on our Wyoming Life. <laughs> Welcome back. Our Wyoming life is not only about us right here in our little corner of Wyoming, but we like to think that we're helping producers, growers, and consumers all over the world with a question that some people care about and some don't. Right off the bat, I am going to ask you a favor. If you only share one video today, this week or, or this month, I hope that it's this one or one like it. Watch it, decide for yourself, but keep it in mind. The best comment that I can see on a video or a post that we make is one, well, one that makes me smile the most and it's not, hey Mike, you're a cutie, are the comments where somebody says that they have no idea how they ended up watching us, but they found something interesting and that opened their eyes to how food ends up at their tables. It's not only that, but it's the families behind your food. And if you're on the fence, go and hit that subscribe button. Come along and experience the ranch life and escape your ordinary. Today, I'm standing in what was the original farmhouse here on the ranch. The first part of it was built in the early 1920s. Now that part is actually this kitchen. I'm remodeling the entire house. I've been working on it for over a year and uh, for one very simple reason, and that's to invite you to come and stay on the ranch. It's a, it's a drastic measure to invite strangers to live next door, but we think it's an important part to bring people closer to agriculture. When this house was built, People may have been closer to agriculture in general. In fact, if you live here, even for a day, you gain a new appreciation, and you might learn something along the way, but more of that coming up later. There's this thing that's called agricultural literacy. It basically means how much you know about agriculture. And according to surveys, it's at an all-time low. An online uh, survey commissioned by the Center of U.S. Dairy had some interesting results. The most popular vegetables in the U.S. are French fries and potato chips. Orange juice was listed as the most popular fruit, and 40% of California 4th, 5th, and 6th graders didn't know that hamburger comes from cows. And speaking of cows, 16 million people in the U.S. still think that chocolate milk comes from a brown cow. I'd like to think that some of those responses were a joke, or maybe even the, uh, the entire survey was taken out of context, but I've also been reading comments and emails for the last three years, and somehow it makes me doubt that. It's not the kids' fault. In fact, it's ours as a whole. Americans spend about 10% of their income on food. It's the lowest of any country on the planet. So it makes sense that when we spend more money on transportation or entertainment or even healthcare, that it doesn't seem as important. After all, I guess there will always be food at the grocery store. So how do we raise awareness about agriculture? You get people interested. In fact, let me show you something. This is a trophy from 1916. Uh, my father-in-law, Gilbert, his dad, uh, won this in a corn competition. You heard me right, corn. Not a, a, a sporting event of any kind, but, but corn. In fact, 1916 was a landmark year for agriculture in general. That was the year that the farm population in the U.S. peaked at 32.5 million, or 32% of the population that were farmers. Now that number is at 2%, only 6,500,000. 544,000. And while the population has tripled, the number of farmers has been reduced by 80%. In fact, if this house could talk, I could only imagine the stories that would come out of it. But I think, more importantly, I kind of wish that those that lived here and died here in this house could hear the questions that we hear today. Why don't all cows have horns? Over 1,000 breeds of cattle are recognized worldwide, and most of those originally had horns. Those are called horn cattle. But there have, and well, there are and have been plenty of cattle that don't have horns, or as they're called, pulled cattle. 
In cattle, horns are actually a recessive gene, much like red hair or white face. Because of that, a producer can take a herd of horned cows and breed them to a bull that doesn't have horns and end up with an entire crop of pulled calves. But do cows really need horns? Cattle are a prey animal, and uh, I guess they're looked upon as dinner to many. Uh, and because of that, they have a number of defenses, including speed, uh, strong kicking legs, and in some cases, horns that can be used to protect themselves and their young. But over the years, some breeds have had the ability to grow horns bred out of them. Angus, for example, our herd, or our cows, never had horns, neither the bulls or the cows. While other breeds like Texas Longhorns, Highlands, and uh, White Park cattle are still known for their horns. Horn cattle, however, can be dangerous to work with, and they can get themselves hung up in gates and fences, they can hurt each other, and they can even cause damage to their environment. That's why some farmers will actually dis disbud cattle that grow horns at a young age to prevent the horns from growing. It's a process that they cauterize and destroy the horn buds. Dehorning, that's another procedure altogether, of uh, removing larger horns is normally performed with local anesthesia or sedation, and that's done by a vet or a trained professional. There's no denying, however, that a set of horns, well, that makes a bull or a cow just a little bit more majestic, but remember, horns or not, they still are just as dangerous. Not all cows are milk cows. Cattles come in, in all kinds and breeds, just like dogs. And like dogs, some are bred for certain purposes. A chihuahua might have enough attitude to act like a police dog, but when it comes to chasing down a fleeing bad guy, I'd rather have a German Shepherd or a Doberman Pinscher working for me. In the world of cattle, some are beef cows and some are dairy cows. Our cattle on the ranch are bred specifically for their beef. While our breeding stock still gets pregnant and has a calf and feeds that calf her milk, she's nowhere near the class of a milk cow. A milk cow, typically a Holstein or a Jersey, although there are many different breeds of milk making machines, they will still only make milk after having a calf. After she has her calf, she's capable of making more milk, more than one calf could ever need. Some dairy cows can produce up to eight gallons of milk per day, while a beef cow will only produce enough milk to keep one, maybe two calves fed and happy without much extra, about one to two gallons a day. Like us, all cows are different, and we're good at different things. Dairy cows are kind of like the marathon runners of the cow world, seeming to eat all they want and never gain weight. While beef cows are the weightlifters. They're stocky and strong and a bit more thick-headed, kind of like their owners. The influence of farming and ranching and all types of agriculture is all around us. Like this house, I would hate to see it go away or have people just ignore it or forget about it. The longest flight of a chicken, 13 seconds. The elevator in the Statue of Liberty uses a soybean-based hydraulic fluid. The average U.S. farmer can feed 155 people. Women make up 30% of today's farmers. Many of the products that we use every day are byproducts of farming and ranching, from detergents to paint to x-ray film, chalk, textbooks, and musical instruments. Last but not least, pickles come from cucumbers, a fact that only 22% knew. Seems silly, right? But with only 2% of the US population living on farms, the other 98% can't be blamed or hated because they're not connected to it. It's a busy world, and it's no wonder that non-farmers and their kids don't give a second thought to what happens on the farm. Hopefully, most are informed enough to know that chocolate milk doesn't come from a brown cow, but it still doesn't mean they're connected to where their food comes from. That's why we and many others on YouTube and Facebook and everywhere else do what we can to bring the farm and the ranch to the world. Social media is a great tool, and who knows, it may be what saves us. The world population is set to jump from 7 billion to 9 billion by 2050. Farmers will need to double food production by then to keep pace. Those that built this house in the beginning of the 20th century may be shocked where we are now, but I know for a fact that they would have never given up. Please take a minute today, share this video, or any video really that'll help raise agricultural awareness. Because if we're going to eat tomorrow or 30 years from now, whether it's a hamburger or a salad, it's gonna take all of us working together to make that happen.
Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'm in the final stages of remodeling this house, and I hope to have it on Airbnb by March 1st, and I hope, and to, I hope to welcome our first guest to the ranch very soon after. If you'd like to enter a pool to become that first guest, all you have to do is send an email to mail at rwyomonglife.com. Tell us who you are and where you're from, and you'll get first dibs. I'm going to go back and get some more work done, but until next time, have a great week, and thanks for joining us in our Wyoming Life. All right, a little first person action here. Let's go for a little tour. This is the kitchen. It's not quite done yet, but uh, it's getting there. Uh, stove, fridge, you know, all that good stuff. These cabinets were actually put in back in the 70s. They are ridiculously expensive cabinets. You can check them out here. It's crazy. All right, over here, let's go this way. Over here, living room where we've got some furniture shoved away here. Uh, nice little couch, kind of a man cave thing going on. Um, TV, entertainment center, kind of a, there's an old milk jug there, decoy, some other stuff over here, old clocks, lanterns, cool stuff. Uh, little sitting room over here. We're gonna actually have another video about this house. I'm probably spoiling all the surprises, but if you stuck around this long, thanks. Old turntable. A lot of this stuff actually came off of the um, Gilbert's original ranch house. There's the sewing machine. Here's another look at the, the trophy there. 1916, December 11th. All right, this is kind of like a little dining room type thing. That is actually Gilbert's uh, roll top desk there. There's Gilbert hanging out with us. Out here is a, is a kind of a weird room that we're trying to figure out what we're gonna do with. It's kind of a bigger room. Might be a game room or something. Here's one of the bedrooms. Artwork actually sent to us by a subscriber, Miss Patty Amato, sent us this artwork. And then you go down this way, and there's two more bedrooms. Small bedrooms. Still in the process of furnishing. And then back in here is the bathroom. And that's it, that's the whole house. This farmhouse has actually been added on to um, one, two, three, four, maybe five times. In fact, if you look at the roof line outside, it's uh, it's got some crazy, crazy lines going on in the roof. So that's it. Thanks guys.